So you can have your hands on your hips, just pull that feed back. So just noticing your sort of natural position there with the pelvis. So you may have sort of thought about it a bit from last week and noticed maybe you're a little bit tilted posteriorly. So you've got that flatness through the lower back or that you've tilted anteriorly. So you've got more of that arch through the low back. So just really bringing your awareness to those deviations. Let's just take the pelvis backwards and forwards. Just starting to limber up through the low back as well. Coming to rest now in that midway neutral position. Just taking the spine along again if you drop back down. So that's the position that we want to try to hold throughout the session. So working now into our breath, so let's inhale. So we're inhaling through the nose, inhaling laterally, feeling the rib cage expand out to the side, pulling that air right down to the bottom of the lungs. Exhaling now, full exhale as if you're blowing through a straw or onto a feather, feel the rib cage soften back down. Again, you can feel for that feedback if you want to. Inhale through the nose. Just having your hand on the rib cage, feel them moving outwards and back in, just to make sure that the air is going in the right place. Inhale, feel the rib cage expand. Now, as we exhale, just beginning to pull the tummy button in towards the spine. So starting to fire up the core chamber, bring that stability around the midsection. So remembering that corset of our abdominals coming around into our spine. Inhale, exhale, pulling that tummy button in towards the spine, keeping long through the spine. And now our final piece of our puzzle. Inhale, as we exhale, pull that tummy button in, start to work those pelvic floor muscles. So remember, try closing the lift, bringing it up to the first floor. So pulling those muscles up in towards the tummy button as, as if when you're sneezing or laughing or coughing you have that bracing feeling around the pelvis let's do one more inhale exhale exhale now pulling that tummy button in so we just want about a third of that full contraction so trying to maintain that connection throughout the session so we're going to start again on our foot sway so just finding that base of support with the big toe the little toe and heel so just keeping our posture neutral, just allowing the arms to hang by the side, long through the spine. Inhaling here. As we exhale, we're just going to sway over to one side, keeping the feet in contact with the mat. So we're just moving here through the ankle. So just taking it from side to side. Starting to challenge our balance now as our center of gravity is shifting away from the midline. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, let's take it over the other. We'll do one more each side. So we just want to be moving here in that single plane, in that coronal plane. So taking it just from side to side. So keeping the abdominals, pelvic floor active to stop us deviating backwards. So come back to center. So we're now going to take it backwards and forwards. So we want to keep the heels and the toes pushed down to the floor. So let's start with a big inhale. Exhaling now, feel that core contraction. Let's take it forward. Inhale it back. Exhale, a bit tricky going backwards. Feel those feet grip into the floor. Let's do two more each way. Back to center. Exhale. Find something to focus on just to keep your balance. Feel that core engage even more. So feel those deep abdominals working as we try to Maintain our center of gravity, bring everything back to center. So we're now going to combine the two and do our little, little circles. So we're going to go in a full circle. So inhale here. Exhale, let's take it forward to begin with and take it round in a circle. So again, just working through the ankle. So circumduction through the ankle. We'll do four in each direction. So just slow and control. Just feel all those different muscles working from the feet through the thighs, up into the abdominals as well. So everything's working to keep us upright and keep us stable. Last one in this direction. 
Inhale, coming back to center. Exhale, let's take it round the other way. You may find this way a little bit trickier because normally we automatically start with our dominant side. So you may find this a little bit trickier to keep control of. Just slow it right down. Maintain focus on your posture, on that contact with your feet. Bringing it around now back to center. Okay, great. How are you feeling? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Up. Okay, so we want to now, we're going to start looking at our spinal movements. I'll take this off so you can see. So what we want to think about here is moving the spine as a complete unit. So with deviations, it may be that you move your upper back more than your lower back. Um, or vice versa. So we just want to think about everything working together. So coming up from the cervical spine in the neck, right down into our coccyx and our sacrum here at the bottom of the spine. So we're just going to take our spine through its four sort of principal ranges of motion. So starting in neutral, I'm just going to press the hands on the thigh. So we're going to first take the spine into flexion. So that's our forward movement. So you may find um, that some movements are easier or more difficult than others. So just think on a scale of zero to five, where zero is absolutely fine, no problem, no discomfort whatsoever, no stiffness. And number five is I'm solid, I can't move, I'm stuck basically. Um, so it'd be good to have your feedback on where you rate yourself on each of these. So I can always try to work out where your um, deviations are. So let's just start with the hands, just resting on the fronts of the thighs, little soft bend in the knee. So we want to think about, again, just moving every part of the spine. So we're just gonna come into a forward flexion. So we're taking the spine almost into a C curve here. So we're not hinging at the hips, the hips are staying stable. We're just taking the hands as far down just as, the, as far as the legs. So what we're trying to avoid here is this. So dominating with the upper back, we want the lower back to play its part as well. So everything is coming down to that forward flexion. Let's inhale, take it back, just stacking the spine back with the head floating on top. And let's do one more of those. So again, just thinking from the top of the head, just taking it forward, allowing the hands to slide down towards the knees, keeping the pelvis in neutral. Just feeling each little vertebra playing its part in the movement. So we should be quite rounded through the back now with the tummy button collapsed in towards the spine. Inhale here, exhale, let's bring it all the way back up to standing bringing that head up towards the ceiling. Okay, so we're now going to take it in the opposite direction. So we're going to just cross the hands over the chest, we just allow the shoulders to relax. We're just getting the arms out of the, out of the picture. So come start in neutral again. Um, so thinking about the same movement as before, so each vertebra, this time we'll be starting more from the bottom of the back, so starting from right down in the coccyx. So we're now going to extend backwards. I mean, it's going to be a much smaller movement because our spine isn't designed to have a great deal of extension, but we just want to take the pelvis into neutral, keep that stable. So imagine you've got concrete trousers on, so we're just really moving from the, from the back. So inhale here, as we exhale, let's start to take the spine backwards. So just taking the gaze up towards the ceiling, feel the abdominals working here as well. So we don't want to kind of give way and allow ourselves to fall backwards. We just want to find what the range of movement here is in extension. Okay, inhale it back. So let's do that one more time. Exhale. So just feel each vertebra working. Try not to allow the upper back to dominate. So we want to bring some flexion, some extension here into the low back as well. If it is difficult, then it's good to know that and we can work on that. Okay, so let's bring it back up. 
So we're now going to go side to side, so lateral flexion. So just taking the arms down by the side. So there's, it's quite a good gauge here with the, with the arms and the legs. So just identifying if you can get further down on one side than the other. So what we don't want to do here, and do feedback to me if, if that's your, your motion and the way you have to do it. But we don't want to be rotating through the spine. We want to keep the shoulders sort of in line with the hips and we're just moving side to side, okay? So just starting on one side, inhaling. We exhale, we're going to slide the hand down towards the knee. So we're keeping the hips level. Shoulder is in that same plane as the hip and just sliding that hand down towards the knee. Inhale, bringing it back. Taking it down the other way now. So you may find that this hand gets a little bit further or doesn't get quite as far without rotating forward. So not cheating to take that hand further by rolling forward with that other shoulder. So keeping everything where it should be. Let's do one more each side. Let's feel that curve into the side of the abdominals, into the side of the rib cage. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale, let's take it down the other way. Inhale, bring it back. So the arms are going to come back over the chest again. We're now going into rotation. So what we want here, normally we keep the hips quite static, but we want the hips to go through that range of motion as well. So finding neutral. Inhaling here, as we exhale, we want to take the spine into rotation. So looking over one shoulder and allow the spine to follow. Feel that stretch through the whole length of the spine. Inhale, bring it back to center. Exhale, round the other way. Allowing the hips to go to, so we want rotation also into the Lower back, bring it back. We do one more each way. Just takes a few sort of goes to get everything moving. So you may find it get a little bit further this time, but don't don't force it. Just take it to where you're more comfortable. Bring it back. Okay, so inhaling as we exhale. Let's take it round the other way. That release through the spine, bring it back. Lower the arms back down. So we're just going to start with a little movement into the hips. So going into a little bit of a, a squat. So it will help just kind of get us ready for our chair movements in a minute as well. So coming into neutral, just placing the hands onto the front of the thighs again. So what we want to start to notice and to activate is the flexion within our ankle. So plantar flexion is where you take it down towards the floor. So pointing the toes. Then dorsiflexion is where you bring the toes up towards the shin. So it's the dorsiflexion that we want to develop. So particularly if you're maybe out of condition or you've got aches and pains and certain misalignments within the body, you get that kind of flat foot fall and you don't necessarily pick the foot up. So it's that dorsiflexion movement that we need really to help um, optimal movement really, particularly when we're walking. So we're going to just start with the hands on the thighs. Inhaling. Exhale, just take a little dip. So taking the knees over the toes, just allowing the hands to slide down. So just coming into a little chair sit, keeping the pelvis neutral. Let's feel the thighs start to activate. You see how the toe starts to move up towards the shin or the shin down towards the toe. Bring it back up to standing. So coming back along through the spine. We'll do two more of those. So let's take it down as we exhale. So just slow controlled movements. So we want to keep the knees parallel as well. So we're not allowing the knees to roll towards each other or out to the side. We want to keep that aligned with the hips. Let's bring it up as we inhale. 
standing tall. Exhale now, let's slide the hands down the legs one last time. Just notice how that feels in the ankle and through to the feet. Bringing it back up, standing tall. Okay. So we're going to be moving one leg at a time, but what we want to observe is what's happening with the static leg. So really how we're using our hips, our legs, our feet to keep us stable. So we're just going to start hands on the hips if you want to for balance, just coming into neutral again. So we're going to slide one leg forward. So keeping contact with the floor, just sitting back into that supporting leg. So we want the toes to be facing forwards towards the end of the mat. Okay, so coming back up to seated, so standing, sorry. You can keep the legs where they are. Exhale, let's take it down again. So you'll notice that this standing leg, the foot is going into dorsiflexion. So if you're struggling to sort of get lower, it could be that there's a, a restriction there within the ankle. Okay, we'll do one more, we'll take it down for a third time. See if you can get a little bit deeper, just seeing if that foot will flex further anymore. Bring it back. Swapping it around the other way, so we always have to check both sides. So just taking the other leg forward now. Oh, again, wrong way. So we just want to sit back again onto that back leg, toes are pointing forward, just noticing what the ankle is doing. So you may find again that this side is a little bit easier or a little bit harder than the other side. Okay, let's bring it up. Exhale, take it down again. So remembering to keep that little bit of activation through the core and pelvic floor. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, taking it down again. So I've got a little bit of an outturn on this foot when I do this. Let's bring it back to centre. How is that feeling? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. So same principle again, but this time the leg is going to come out to the side. So this time you want to look at what's happening with the knee. Does the knee rotate inwards or do the feet sort of pronate from side to side? So find your standing leg. A little bend in it. Just take that strain off the knee. I'm just going to slide the other foot out to the side. So just taking it in line with the hip, just out to the side, keeping the hips level and long through the spine and just notice any deviations within that standing leg. So use your, if you can see yourself on your camera, a little bit of feedback. Okay, bring it back to standing. Move it over the same way again. So slide that leg out towards the end of your mat, just dipping into that standing leg. So what we really want to notice here is if your foot is maybe rolling or your knee is rolling in, what we just want is that alignment with the hip, the knee and the ankle. It's quite hard to see from this position, but we want to keep that neutral position of the knee. Okay, back to centre. We'll take it the other side now. So slide the other leg out towards the end of your mat. It's coming to a little bend in that standing leg. Notice how this is feeling, keeping that foot in alignment with the thigh again, that foot likes to go out to the side. Bring it back to center. We'll do that one more time. Let's slide that foot out to the side. Just noticing any rolling in of the knees, any pronation within the feet. I'm going to keep that straight line now from the ankle up to the Bring everything back to centre. Just give the ankle the roll around if you need to as well. So we're going to look at 
mobility within the within the foot, a whole sort of range of motion of the of the step um, from a static position, and then we'll take it forward. So naturally, how we walk is heel to toe, and then taking the weight onto those two points at the foot at the front. So we've got the ball of the foot, and then the ball of the little toe. And the foot ideally is facing forward, and we've got that little arch under the inside of the foot. So we're just going to roll through each foot side to side. We'll do one leg first, and then the other. So we're just coming to rest in each floor again. So as you inhale, just take the weight off one foot. Remember that soft bend through the standing leg. And as we exhale, we're just going to place the weight onto the heel and just push up through the toes. So going into that stepping movement with the foot, inhale, close the heel down, exhale, rolling through the foot. So just going at your tone page, just seeing how it feels, just being conscious to make all those points of contact as you go. So ending with the top of the big toe, Rolling through the whole length of the foot. Just noticing any contact with the, the inside of the foot with the arch, as we want that really to be lifted. So any change in that will suggest some rotation, pronation within the foot. Okay, last one on the side. Bring that back to centre. We'll do the other side as well. So just starting again in neutral, just shifting your weight onto that standing leg, inhaling onto the toes, exhale, let's start on the heel and roll through that foot. Finishing it up with the heel, lifting onto the big toes, rolling through the foot, keeping the length through the spine, core is active. Exhale, roll through that foot. A couple more on this side. So again, noticing any differences from left to right. Just notice how the foot there goes into that dorsiflexion as you come back down to the floor. We're going to move towards the end of the mat now. We're going to put it into practice. I'm going to do a few steps forwards and backwards. So again, we want to just maintain control here of the hips. So putting the hands on the hips just to get that feedback. Um, and be useful to know if there's any kind of swaying from side to side as you walk as well, because that's an indication of stability around the hip area. So just taking small steps, so just rolling heel to toe, exhale heel to toe. So just taking it forwards towards the end of your mat, just nice and slowly. Trying not to look at your feet, trying to keep your posture from being torn through the spine. Just notice that feeling from heel to toe, all those little muscles working. Finishing with that big toe and lifting the other foot. You reach the end of your mat, you can turn around and we're going to go back the other way. Okay, so when you're ready, let's start heel to toe. Taking it forward slowly. I'm just noticing any differences from side to side. Quite strange sort of thinking about how you're using your feet when you step. So it's something you do so subconsciously. Um, but it might feel quite strange as well. So I feel like this side of my ankle starts to starts to niggle a little bit. So it's also got a little bit of a formation on that foot as well. So it does, it gives you a lot of feedback, all of the little movements. Okay, how was that for everybody? Okay. Good. Good, good. Hope you're getting some useful feedback for it. Okay, you may now grab your chair. So we'll be looking at our seated posture and then that change from seated up to standing as well. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll put my chair sideways and I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so just come and sit on your chair as you would normally. Just come in. And then just thinking about sort of your natural posture. So as we sort of get accustomed to habits and things, there's a tendency to either turn the pelvis anteriorly and have this longer curve in the back or to tilt it posteriorly and have this stoop, this slump with the shoulders. So just noticing what you, which way you sort of tend to deviate will help to identify what muscles you need to sort of reactivate or tone down a little bit. So imbalances are all about muscles becoming overstretched and underactive, or they're tight and they're, they're too active, and then muscles that shouldn't be working the compensate for muscles that aren't working so once we work out what's going on we can then start to retrain those muscles back into where they should be and more of a balance okay so we're now going to come into neutral so let's start just taking that head up towards the spine so head up towards the ceiling so growing tall through the spine just relaxing the hands on the thighs so allow the shoulders to relax down Okay, just letting go of that, just noticing where you where you land when you come back down, whether you've got that tilt within the pelvis. Let's take it up again, let's take it along towards the ceiling. Let's really relax, release again. So notice yourself coming into your natural position. Okay, let's take it up one more time, long through the spine. So now we want to keep this length here. So let's take a big inhale. And as we exhale, let's turn the pelvis, tailbone under, so the pelvis is coming backwards. So we're making contact now with the back of the chair. Inhale here. Exhale, let's tilt it the other way. So the back is coming away from the chair. So going into that lordotic curve, that lordotic posture. Taking it backwards and forwards again. So just doing our pelvic tilts. Coming along through the spine still, keep that length there. We're coming to rest now in that midway point of neutral. So we've got these little sit bones at the very bottom of the pelvis, kind of like two little triangles. So that's the contact we want to be making here with the chair. So you'll notice if you roll forward that they lift and if you roll backwards then they sort of disappear under your thigh. So that's a good sort of gauge that you're sat on neutral pelvis. So again, hands can just be rested on your thighs or down by the sides. So just keep them nice and relaxed. So we're just going to begin with some um, foot pedals off the floor. So just strengthening through um, the hips here in seated position. So keeping the feet flexed, so we want to keep this dorsiflexion within the foot. Inhale here, as we exhale, just hover that foot off the floor. So just lifting the knee, just slightly higher than hip height, bring it back down as you inhale. Exhale, let's lift it up and inhale it down. So here we want to keep the pelvis neutral as possible. So we're just moving through the hip flexors here. So just moving from side to side, keeping your pelvis neutral, keeping long through the spine here as well. So if you want to put your hands on your hips for a little bit of feedback, you can do. Okay, let's do one more each side. Last one now. Okay, let's lower that back down. We're now going to take the leg long. So having the longer lever, with the leg just provide a little bit more challenge for these muscles. So inhale here. As we exhale, keeping the foot in dorsiflexion, so keeping the toes pulled up, we're going to lengthen that leg now. Inhale. So you might find as well that it's starting to work a little bit more into the core because those core muscles assist with the stability within the pelvis. Lifting it up, just taking it as far as you can, not forcing it up towards the ceiling. Trying to take the knees straight if you can. 
So it's okay taking the knees straight in this position because it's not holding any weight. So good just to see what our range of motion is. And we'll do one more on each side. Feel that length through the back of the leg. Lowering that back down. So when we go up from a chair, if we're running a table, we generally will move to the side. So we'll probably quite lazily sort of do this sort of thing. Um, so we'll start, we'll start with the shoulder and then we'll just drag our hips up. So that can on a bad day cause various twinges and things. So we're gonna have a look at swiveling in this position. And we'll come back to this um, sort of movement as we go um, in the following weeks. But it's about moving the whole of the spine as one. So trying to move everything as a unit rather than trying to dominate with one part of the spine. So what we're going to do is just keeping the hands just on the hips or just around the sort of midsection. Just taking one leg out to the side, so just allowing the leg to abduct whilst keeping the hips level. And then just using that as a lever just to pivot the hips round onto the chair. If that makes sense. So your shoulder and your hip should stay in alignment. Your tummy button holding your spine staying in neutral. So the only movement really is coming from that leading leg and then just pushing off that other leg. So let's take it round the other way. So let's take the leg just out to the side, keeping the hips level. And just think about moving the hips and the shoulders in line. Just allow the legs to do that movement for you. Obviously, if you've got a table in front of you, then that can help as well with a little bit of a push. But the most important thing here is just keeping this alignment really with the, with the spine. So let's try that a couple more times. Just taking one leg out to the side, just rotating around on the chair. So a little pivot, like you're a little record on a record player. Everything's moving at the same time, at the same speed. Okay, let's take it back the other way. Keeping those hip bows, those sit bows in contact with the floor. So allowing that let the legs to come through. So as we go through our sitting and standing, you'll feel the uh, sort of the activity within the thighs. We want to build up power within the thigh muscles to help us with these sorts of movements and fit into standing as well. So it's power is that sort of short, sharp movement. So those fast twitch muscles we talked about last week. Let's take it round one more time. So just starting with that abduction of the hip, just allow the hips to swivel around. So the spine moves as one. Okay, so take it back the other way now. You may find that you have to go a little bit way the other way round and then we adjust your legs. But as long as everything stays in that one position. So now we're going to go from seated to standing. So whether you've swiveled or not, you still need to get up. So that's one of the main things here is that base of support from when we come to standing. So it may be that you need to just shovel to the edge of your chair. That's fine, but we want those points of contact with the floor. So big toe, little toe and heel. Um, again, if you've got a surface, you can assist yourself but it's just thinking about which muscles play a part in this role um, so normally we just kind of go nah. we just throw ourselves up probably leading with your shoulders your upper back sort of jerks into place but what we need to think about here is keeping the core stable so supporting through that low back area and having the movement come from the thigh so building that power within the thigh muscles so you can change the position of the feet to where you're comfortable, where you think you feel able to get up. Hands again can be behind you or just on your hips, wherever you need them to be. So inhaling here. So just begin to hinge forward a little bit just to get that leverage, but again, moving everything together. So we're not punching forward. The shoulders 
are moving in the same plane with the same speed as the rest of the back. So inhale as we exhale, just pushing it up through the thighs, just coming up to standing. Keep in that position within the spine, let's take it back down. Exhale as we lower. Feel the thighs working. Slow and controlled. So let's try that again. Inhale. Exhale. So just lean forward to begin with. Get the spine in alignment. Got your buttons tucked in. Pelvic floor is working. Just pushing up now through the thighs. Coming up to standing. Inhale. Exhale, let's take it back. So a little dip through the hips, feel the thighs working, going back down. A bit tricky going backwards if you don't trust that the chair's there. <laughs> a bit more to think about. Okay, let's do one more each way. Inhale. Exhale, just hinging forward, pushing it up through the feet. Coming to stand tall. Last one, let's sit back down. Inhale. Exhale, let's lower it down. And when you when you sit down, remembering to keep that neutral position again through the spine. So not letting go is it a bit as soon as you sit down. And just finding that position where you feel well supported. Okay. So we're going to do a few little pelvic floor exercises in this position um, because we did them standing, lying, etc. last week, but we didn't do them seated. So just come and find neutral, just resting your hands where they're comfortable, doesn't matter where. So we're gonna do some slow twitch and then some fast twitch as well. So we kind of remember how to activate both of them. So let's begin by inhaling for four. And as we exhale, we're gonna brace those pelvic floor muscles and just hold them there for eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale as you let go of those muscles. Exhale, let's clench those slow twitch muscles. Six, five, four, three, two, one. If you want to, you can close your eyes just to bring a little bit more focus to the movement. So inhale, let go. Exhale, let's activate that pelvic floor. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale. Same again last time. Let's exhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Gently relax. Now we're going to do our fast twitch muscles. So remember, if we count down from eight, we're going to do eight little pulses. So getting those fast twitch muscles involved this time. So let's inhale for four. One, and activate that pelvic floor. And as we exhale for eight, let's do eight little twitches. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, relax. Three, four, exhale, engage that pelvic floor for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale. Pelvic floor is active for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last one, inhale. Exhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let me release, open the eyes if you have them closed. A little bit trickier in that position, I think, maybe because the legs are changing the position of the pelvis. Okay, so remembering what we've just been through, let's come back up to standing. So pushing up through the feet and through the thighs. So we're just going to look at 
some stretches as well into the hip. So you can do these with the chair to make them deeper, or you can do it without. So let's start without, and if you feel that you want, you can go to use the chair as well. <clears throat> Take the feet hip distance apart. And they're going to come into a scissor position, so one foot in front of the other. Inhale, the arms are going to come over the head. As we exhale, we're going to push forward with that front hip, keeping the back foot pushed down. So we're stretching here into the front of this leg, so into the hip flexors. So those are the muscles that get like quite tight um, and overactive when we've sat down for too long. We're also having that nice stretch as well through the back of that calf. Let's push back up to standing. We're going to go forward again. Exhale. Bring it back to standing. If you want to go a bit deeper, you can put your front foot onto the chair. So challenging the balance a little bit more here. So just being mindful to keep the alignment with the hip. Inhale as we exhale. Inhale the arms overhead as we exhale, let's lunge forward onto that front leg, keeping the heel pushed down. So just keep that core engagement, keep lifted through the spine. Inhale, let's take it back. We'll do one more and we'll go to the other side. Exhale, lunge it forward. Keeping that back heel pushed down, really lengthening through that back leg. Okay. Inhale, let's bring it up. Gently bring the foot down to the floor. So we'll swap the position of the legs. We'll do two on the floor, and if you want to progress, we'll do two on the chair as well. So inhale, bring the arms overhead. Find neutral with your pelvis. Exhale, let's move forward onto that front knee. So taking the ankle again into dorsiflexion as the knee comes over the foot, pushing that back heel back down into the floor. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, let's take it over again. Really lengthening through that back leg into the hip flexors. Okay, inhale, bring it back. So we're going to do two more. If you want to use your chair, you can do. <laughs> so keeping it from the core, inhale. So exhale, let's take that. Go over the front foot, feel that stretch through that back leg, pushing the heel down to the floor. Inhale, let's push it back. Last one, exhale, take that knee over the toes, feel that stretch through the front of the hip on the back leg. Inhale, bring it back. And we bear it down. We're going to come and lie down on our backs. So just make your way down to the mat nice and slowly. And discard on the chair. Done with the chair today. So coming to lie down, our knees are bent. So coming into a crook lying position, feet hip distance apart. Just resting the hands down by the sides. So we'll start just with our pelvic tilt. So just coming to find neutral again with the pelvis. So inhale. And as we exhale, we're going to push the tummy button in towards the ceiling. So peeling the pelvis away from the floor. So our lower back is going into extension. Inhale, bring it back to center. Exhale, tilt the tummy, the tailbone under. So you've got that little lift now through the hips. Keeping the knees in line, so squeezing the thighs. So they stay towards each other, just finding that little lift in the, in the hips and the tailbone. Bring it back to center. We'll do one more each way. So as we exhale, 
tilting the pelvis forward so that we lift through the mid back, pushing the tummy button towards the ceiling. Inhale back to center. Exhale now, let's tilt the tailbone under, feel that little lift through the hips, squeezing through the thighs and allow the glutes to activate here as well. So helping to lift the hips off the floor. Inhale, bring it back down to center. So just finding your midway point now of the neutral between those two extremes. We're now going to find that little lumbar arch in the low back and just slide the hands underneath. So your palms are down towards the floor and your hands are almost acting like a little cushion for the lumbar spine. We're going to take one leg long, take one leg away from you. Find the space. So by having the hands under the low back, we provide extra stability to allow us to work into the abdominals. And also having the legs in these two positions also just provides a little bit more of a support for the pelvis. So where the leg is long, we want to take the foot into dorsal flexion again. So pulling the toes up towards the shin. So just feel that length through the back of the calf. So we're going to go into a little bit of um, what's called a modified ab curl. So just starting to activate the abdominals without putting that additional strain on the low back because a lot of traditional ab crunches really don't account for um, protection of the low back. So this is just a good sort of foundation really just to get the abdominals a little bit stronger. So you can begin by resting the elbows on the floor. So the elbows are your anchor. So progression will be to lift the elbows up, but we'll keep them down here for now. So just tucking the chin in towards the chest, inhaling here. And as we exhale, we will be doing our activation of the pelvic floor and our tummy button. At the same time, we're just going to hover the head off the floor, literally a tiny bit. Just imagine you've got enough room for a golf ball under there, so a tiny little lift with the head. Just feel the abdominals start to activate. Inhale, lower the head back down. So we're going to do four on this side, then we'll change the position of the legs, just so we get some of an even distribution throughout the midsection. So inhale, foot is flexed. As we exhale, just hover the head off the floor ever so slightly. Just feel those abdominals start to activate. Inhale, bring it down. Inhale it here. Exhale, just have a full exhale, empty the lungs, and then inhale, bring it back down. Inhale to prepare, so exhale, let's lift the head off the floor, tilting that chin in towards the chest, tummy button is active, pelvic floor is working. Inhale, lower it down. Both all right? Yeah. yeah. Great. Let's change the position of the legs. So can you feel that working within your lower abdominal area? Yeah. Yeah. Great, but there's hopefully no discomfort within the low back. Changing the position of the leg, just making sure the pelvis is still in neutral, flexing the foot on that long leg. Just resting the elbow on the floor, let's inhale. As we exhale, pulling that tummy button towards the spine, just hovering that head just a tiny bit up off the floor, just remembering that goal for. Inhale, bring it back. Inhaling again, just feeling the lungs. Exhale, let's lift the head. Emptying the lungs out here. As you pull that tummy button in. Inhale, bring it back. Nearly there, last two, inhale. Exhale, lifting the head off the floor, bringing that chin in towards the chest. Inhale it down. Last one. Exhale. Empty those lungs. Inhale, gently lower the head back down. Bring the knees back in line, so we want the knees to be bent. Just resting the hands down by the sides. So we're going to come up into seated. 
So just thinking about what we were doing before with the spinning round in the chair, just think about rolling onto your side, but almost allow the hips and the shoulder to move together. So not forcing the hips forward to start with, then just coming up into the seated. Just do a couple of little corrections to finish off. Sort of keep together, just allow the, the knees to fall out, whatever's comfortable for you. We're just going to sink into one elbow, take the opposite arm overhead. So just going to a flat reflection. Quite nice after doing those little crunches. Okay, let's breathe up. Exhale, take it the other way. So we've got to stretch down the side of the body. Bringing it back up. Now I'm going to take one hand and just place it onto the top of the opposite knee. And just take the other hand behind us and just push against that leg. Just feel a rotation through the spine. Breathe into it for a few breaths. Do a stretch. Okay, inhaling it back to centre. Change it all around the opposite way. Hand just comes on top of the knee. Take another hand behind you and just push them around into a rotation. Okay, gently release, bring it back to centre. Going to clasp the hands together, turn them towards me and push forward. So just rounding through the upper back, through the shoulders. And as you release, you can sink through the spine as well. Take the spine to a some flexion, it's quite a nice stretch. Gently release. Release the hands, and I'm going to clasp them behind us. Push them away from you. So just open up through the chest, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Okay. Hold up. 